Talk about a great way to spend a weekend. We are at the Retro Jacks Expo in Jacksonville, Florida. Let's take a look at it right now. Hey, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I'm John. I'm Mo. And we are Gen X Grown Ups. Yes. And, and we're in our element right now. <laughs> I am like a pig in shit. <laughs> <laughs> we are at the Retro Jacks Convention in Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah. Uh, this is the beginning of March 2019. This is the first year they have done this combined thing. Several years yeah. ago, they it was had. Just arcade. That's right. It and it was, it was at a, a college in town. Yeah. They it was, it was kind of small. I mean, Super they, had, they had a lot of machines and stuff, yeah. but it was just smaller. Yep. Here, my God, they got room Woo. to spread out. You All could, right. You can fit double number of people in here and still be comfortable. Yep. We're going to give you a quick show you around. Hey, if this is the first time you're watching, click that little subscribe down below and yeah. give us a little thumbs up, a notification bell. You'll <laughs> always know what we're doing. But now let's take a look around the Retro Jacks Expo. Absolutely. We caught up with the Retro Jacks organizers, Doug and Steve. The first thing I asked them was why they chose this venue for this refreshed event. And please pardon the audio quality. With all of those awesome arcade machines, it was delightfully noisy where I was conducting this interview. One of the things we really wanted to do was expand. Uh, we, our previous two shows really had about 100, 125 games. We really wanted to up the ante, get about 250 games in here. So we knew we needed a larger space. And then once we got in here and started looking around, what really made sense for us is the amount of space that we could put in between games to really show off the artwork. One of the things, we go to a lot of these shows and the games get kind of smashed together a little bit, you don't get to enjoy one of the greatest things about the games, which is the 80s art. And so what you'll notice if you walk around here is most of the games you can see the artwork on, especially the pinball machine. I don't think we have a single pinball machine hit behind another. So, so do you do you see this as something you want to do more and more going forward, yearly, biannually? How are you feeling about it so far? I mean, it's well received. How do you feel? So we're getting a lot of positive feedback, obviously, from the collector community as well as folks that are just hearing about it and coming in off the street. So that makes us very excited about the, the, the future of what we might be able to do here. Uh, the other thing I would say is, is very important to us is 100% uh, of the profits of this thing's going to charity. Project Pinball, which you see right here behind us, and also Dreams Come True of Jacksonville, uh, very near and dear to our hearts. So if we're able to, to pull this thing off, pay our bills, make a lot of money to give to charity, it's going to be very hard for us not to want to do this again and again and again. It's not like a private collection. Tell me about how where all these games came from. Absolutely. So uh, I've actually I've been working for about the last six months. I'm working with collectors from all the way up near Atlanta, South Carolina, all the way down to Miami. Those folks are, are kind enough to put their games in their trailers, bring them all the way to Jacksonville, set them up for three days for a bunch of strangers to come in and play them. So it uh, really is all about the community. Without those games, without those exhibitors, there is no show. The same goes for the volunteers. We've got folks from all over the city that have come out here and they're working long shifts, two hours, four hours sometimes 15 hours uh, to really just keep the games up and running, make sure people know where they're going. Uh, it really, this show doesn't happen without uh, exhibitors that are willing to bring their games and volunteers that are willing to come out here and, and help really us can't stress that enough because, you know, probably 90, 95% of these games come from private individuals and collectors, not from businesses, and they, you know, all of them out, you know, they care for them, they restore them, and to come out and you know, let people bang on them for the days, we really appreciate that. And of course, these arcade games are a huge part of Retro Jacks, but that's not all. Take a look at this toy shop. This was a vendor's area that had so much cool stuff. I was blown away at every turn. I'm used to going to conventions and kind of seeing more of the same over and over and over. And while this had your typical pop vinyls and your comic books, there was a lot of great retro stuff, truly retro, old games and magazines and printed material and collectibles. I saw one guy that had more than a dozen Millennium Falcons sitting around just for parts. And you know, before I let Doug and Steve go, I had to ask them one last question. What was your favorite arcade game? That is a good question. So my favorite arcade game of all time is Robotron. Yeah. Robotron 2084. Uh, I, I've loved it since I was a kid. I wasn't very good at it then. Uh, now that I'm older, I picked up one for myself. I've gotten fairly good at it. 
Uh, it's my absolute favorite game. I just can't play it that much because it really starts to raise the, 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 the blood pressure up a little bit. I start moving the machine around the floor. I get really into it. So, Roman 2084 does it for me. Doug, how about you? Mr. Defender, not Stargate. Not Stargate. Although Stargate is better. Why Defender? <laughs> Yeah, no, that's a game I just played a lot. A lot of fun memories as a kid at the 7 Eleven by my house, spent playing Defender, and uh, for whatever reason, that's just a challenging game. You know? it's, it's not like a lot of games in the air with a pattern. It's always, uh, you know, like Roman Times, a different game every time. And you know the Gen X Grown Up crew, we are no slouches when it comes to leaving our initials on a few arcade games. In case you think maybe we spent all of our time at Retro Jacks walking around recording things and doing interviews, no way. We spent many hours here at Arcade Jacks playing the games that we'd loved growing up and never stopped loving, and we left our initials at the top of many a leaderboard. Well, this is it. We're gonna, this is, wow. This is, <laughs> I am so happy that we ended up coming here. I yeah. wish we had been even more involved. Hopefully next year, next we, will year we will be. be. Oh, yeah, we will be, for sure. Yeah. For if there's sure. anything here that you saw, you need to make sure you subscribe to yeah. us here and on social because we will be back again next year. You can Absolutely. bet your bottom dollar. Yeah, if you missed this year, don't worry. I'm sure they'll do this again because they, I think they did this right and they're going to come back for sure. It looks so, like super absolutely. successful, a ton of people here. Yeah, lots of people. It's, it just looks like a great place, man. Let me tell you, it's a blast. It's one down, here. and I, I can't wait for next year to start. Yeah, <laughs> I know, really. i got to get through them early, right? Yep. <laughs> cool. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you next time. See you, everybody. Gen X Grown Up is dedicated to bringing you new Generation X inspired videos every week. Here are a couple more you can watch right now, but for even more, subscribe and enable those notifications. And if you love what we do, we invite you to support us over on Patreon. And of course, your feedback in the comments and a quick thumbs up are always appreciated.